Hello everyone and welcome to my first video in Real Solar System in KSP 1.1.2 and in this episode we are going to test the Falcon 9 rocket with, uh, with a couple of payloads and I've got a lot of mods in here in fact we're currently running at 7.2 gigabytes of RAM so this is a pretty intense install that I'm trying out we've even got the colonization mod here with my own configuration to adapt it to realism overhaul speaking of which we do not have realism overhaul so I'm gonna be testing this without realism overhaul I did have my own Falcon 9 uh, configuration for the KK launchers Falcon 9 the SpaceX pack from KK launchers uh, so I just adapted that to not use realism overhaul realism overhaul manages the having more than one engine configuration on the engines and also manages engine ignition and so right now there there's no ignition limitation on the engines for the Falcon 9 nor can it carry more than one configuration per engine but it is properly configured uh, it is kerosene and oxygen burning and that's because real fuels has been updated so that's good um, I have started the video here because this is our payload I was gonna create a more complicated payload uh, to test how much uh, how much lag I would get with a high part count payload right that's a logical thing to test in real solar system right now and we've got far we've got in fact I think we've got everything except for realism overhaul ready right now we've got advanced jet engine we've got uh, far we've got daily re-entry we've got real heat we've got all the requirements except for real solar uh, realism overhaul itself so that's all good um, I was, but I was gonna put uh, engine on this payload and you can see it's actually a colonization module sized up for real solar system so it's actually four meters across and I was gonna put it with this SSTU part because I wanted to test a bunch of mods I've got universal storage parts up there and other mod parts the the docking port isn't the right size because that's uh, something that's modified by realism overhaul it should be two meters it's only 1.25 meters right now but uh, when I tried to put the engine on this started happening oh dear so apparently the SSTU tanks are not ready for real fuels <laughs> so this would this would obviously uh, lead to an error pretty darn quickly right uh, so we can't do that um, I'll have to take a look at what's happening with SSTU labs parts in that case because uh, uh, well they're very useful and uh, procedural parts uh, is a bit of an issue it creates a lot of lag if you have a lot of parts I could probably create a procedural parts tank here and it should work let's test that out quickly so let me just say I put a simple cone here and put the engine that I was intending to use which is also from SSTU Labs let's see if the engine is the problem or if it was the tank so this was the SSTU Labs engine okay and I'll make the bottom a little bit wider and so now we fit those together and if I fill it up that's fine so now it has an engine and that'll work out uh, not exactly the way I wanted it but I don't think uh, we've got Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, of course, but I don't know if this is the most uh, stable situation for it, though. Maybe I'll just leave off the engine for this test. Eh, alright. That's that's fair enough. Okay, so that'll be our payload. And uh, 53 parts altogether is not much, right? The launcher itself is, is uh, 23 parts. But we'll see what we... What uh, we get as far as frame rates with 53 parts let's just start with that I don't think I can fit too much more uh, complicated a payload in the fairing for the SpaceX launcher oh I do have to test whether the fairings are gonna separate properly or not so again uh, obviously the real realism overhaul configuration for this launcher will have to be somewhat different uh, because of engine ignitions and stuff like that come on uh, so far uh, there is a lack of VAB lag that's nice so that's positive we are using a lot of RAM with all of these parts I might have to trim out this install 7.2 gigabytes is a little bit hefty also it looks like hangar extender does not do exactly what I would like it to do <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't know where that comes in so you know bugs abound but uh, we we plug on nevertheless right um, and you know for all I know by the time I release this video uh, realism overhaul will be updated and all this would have been for naught okay so here we are and SAS on throttle up now uh, there's our supplies as it were 
you can see I do have Scatterer running, so Scatterer is working. Uh, it seems like there's a, sort of a horizon issue there. I don't know what that's about. We are launching out Cape Canaveral. KSC Switcher is working, so that's good. Uh, well, let's go. Now, I don't have Real Plumes configured for this. I tried. I tried to get Real Plumes to work with this. I had it working with in 1.0.5 with this rocket. But for some reason, Real Plumes doesn't want to cooperate with this rocket here. Real Plumes works with the stock engines. The stock configs for Real Plumes work. But for some reason, there's an issue with this one. So we'll have to try that out some other time. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go with the regular configuration on this rocket as it comes. So ignition. And launch. Hmm. I added a different uh, sound effect for ignition because I didn't like the one that came with this pack, but it sounds like I need to tone that down a bit, don't you think? So what I've done is I tried to reconcile environmental vision, the new version of environmental visual enhancements with RSS visual enhancements. And so we do we seem to have you know a city texture here, right, which uh, would come with RSS visual enhancements, but it's not all working quite right. And so right now, RSS Visual Enhancements does not work with the Environmental Visual Enhancements plugins for 1.1. I, I don't, I didn't get it working with the, I didn't manage to get Environmental Visual Enhancements from 1.0.5 working in 1.1. So I assume that's not a thing. Here you see one of the issues that I have. I'm not too sure how to fix it, but there's a lot of flickering here. You could think that that might be because it's passing through the clouds, but I don't know. Now, uh, here we've got the 54 part count vessel here, working in real time. So that's nice. With FAR, daily re-entry, real heat, all the things doing their calculations, mech jab, okay, and all the visual, uh, well, as much as the visual mods as I could squeeze out of it. We do have clouds, but the cloud texture is not quite the way, uh, for some reason, this almost looks like the entire map of the world and then once we get higher up oh I better turn the problem with uh, going real time is that uh, my normal uh, turn pace needs to speed up a bit right because I'm so used to trying to do smart ASS with the lag that it's a lot different now I could just use my KOS script but I didn't think to try and test KOS script right now but yeah take a look at the cloud pattern there that seems like a larger scale than it should be, right? You don't normally get that kind of cloud pattern at this level. And that's like uh, for the entire globe kind of cloud pattern. So I think I've messed something up there. I'm not trying to learn the... Uh, I'm not trying to return the first stage here. I am trying to learn how to return the first stage, but not right now. I do not have TAC Life Support in here. TAC Life Support, I don't know if it's being updated for 1.1 or not. So that's, uh, that's a sad thing. USI Life Support seemed to have some problems. I tried to work it in here, but it didn't seem to be cooperating. So I'll have to see about that. It threw up some errors in the output log and crashed the game. So yeah, the, we've got this weird pattern here. And that definitely seems like the pattern that should be for the entire world. Anyway, set. Ignition. Now, that, that, that's an interesting... I, I just need to uh, go into the configuration and turn down the volume of the sound effects. Okay, uh, looking at it, I don't seem to have a staging for these fairings, do I? Oh, I think uh, I forgot to have old school fairings. Mm, yeah. Old school fairings is required to uh, separate these fairings. I need to get that in. All the things, you know, you have to get all the things in. So, here's an interesting thing. If I look this way, uh, no clouds, but that now it's all fixed. Uh, for a little bit there, it shows clouds one way and no clouds the other way. But now it's alright. But real time, folks. I mean, uh, this is real solar system and everything. This is how it looks on the map, by the way. So it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it looks better than without any clouds, that's for sure. And I've got the high-resolution textures for Earth and the Moon. Let's focus view on the Moon. 
So, very nice textures. Uh, I don't have Scatterer or anything configured for the moon, I think. So, it's not as shiny as it was in 1.0.5. For some reason, RSS visual enhancements, I think, made it look very shiny. Oop. But it doesn't look as good as if uh, RSS visual enhancements was involved. I did copy the textures from RSS visual enhancements, by the way. I tried to uh, sort of work work it in and everything, but nope, uh, it's not looking the way it used to, so I'll have to do some more work on it. But here we go, I mean, we've got a nice little Falcon 9 upper stage here. It is a proper Merlin 1D full thrust version, 934 kilonewtons, 347 seconds of ISP. Just no engine ignitions. So, uh, I think it might be interesting to create some configurations that don't rely on uh, realism overhaul per se, just so I can do some basic testing on the rockets before realism overhaul gets released. Though, like I said, uh, it's possible that by the time I actually release the video, uh, they might. Act but they've got a lot, a lot of parts to work on. I'm just, I just have this one rocket. I think uh, probably the Atlas V from KK Launches should be pretty easy to deal with, and then also uh, there was a Proton M that uh, somebody had made that uh, basically had all the stuff already arranged properly. It was basically realism all overall compatible to begin with. So that should be all right. I've got that installed in here as well. So we are proceeding. My first real solar system video in 1.1 and this 1.1.2. But I need to uh, get the old school fairings. Tell you what, uh, instead of bringing this to orbit, let me sneak in old school fairings quickly, uh, create a different payload, and then we'll test the fairings. So, back down it goes. Okay everyone, I am back, and I have a magnificent payload here. This is a crazy payload with all sorts of parts, 104 different parts. Well, not, they're not all different, there is symmetry involved here, but it's quite an assortment, I think you'll agree. So, uh, if we're going to be testing how things work out. Actually, you know what, I should put some aerodynamic surfaces on here. Uh, just in case FAR has a cow, right? Uh, so, uh, why don't we put some fins on this? You know, why not? Uh, so, fins, maybe these? Uh, these days you can't uh, keep them off the vehicle and press the right click, but I want to tweak scale them down. Uh, you know, hopefully tweak scale will uh, will be a strong test of this as well. Okay, eight fins in a completely ridiculous location. Alright, so we're up to 112. Okay, now what I've discovered is that even with old school fairings installed, and it is in, um, this doesn't seem to appear on staging. So, uh, well, so much for that. That's a little bit disappointing because actually this pack comes with very nice textures for those fairings. So I was hoping to use those for various videos, but if I can't stage them, I can't stage them, right? And uh, the, neither of these is the staging of that fairing. Okay, well, I'll have to look into what's up with that, but for now we will use the stock fairings. Who knows, maybe they'll create... Oh, uh, I should check procedural fairings. There was a problem with struts and procedural fairings in uh, a colonization video. So what I'm going to do is I think it's because of auto struts but I'm not sure. So we're gonna do a little test. We will test procedural fairings. And so auto struts off but I'm gonna put some struts in here. Heck why not. Add to the part count, right? So uh, well these dirt pods seem to require some struts so let's put four struts from here to here Okay, and uh, sure, uh, how about uh, really make it irritated? Uh, let's put some struts between the fairing base and the payload. Okay, so we'll go with this. At least now we can stage the fairings. Very important. But we'll need some launch clamps. We should also try a KSC switcher, shouldn't we? Let's see if that works out. So we won't launch from Cape Canaveral this time. We'll launch from uh, a, a SpaceX Falcon 9 from Baikonur. That should be interesting. But we'll see how Baikonur looks like. Okay. Now this is how the clouds look here in the tracking station. They look a lot different in the map view when uh, we actually launch. So that's interesting. Okay, Baikonur, where are you? There you are. Nope, that's not you. 
that's you. Okay. Hmm. Well, it seems like we're in the middle of a busy city. I'm <laughs> not too sure that's how it works, but okay, we will deal with that. The city lights in around Florida are in the right places. Not too sure about this particular city right at the location of Baikonur. Okay, I've uh, decided to put some Kerbals in on the off chance that Kerbals create lag. We don't seem to be controlling from the right place though. Uh, we're con turning, controlling from one of the hurt pods probably. Let's control from here. Ooh, wow. Okay, hold on. We have experienced some... Oh boy. Okay, uh, why don't we... Hmm, hold on. Hmm. I don't think KSC Switcher is a good thing right now. Let me revert flight. Let, let me test that theory. Maybe it's a part, maybe it's KSC Switcher. Uh, now, it's a very pre-release situation for KSC Switcher, so it's tenuous at best. Let me revert to vehicle assembly. Oh. Okay, runtime error, KSP 64. Okay. Uh, that's not good, is it? Okay, well, obviously the game crashed and that didn't work, so let's try to go back to Cape Canaveral and see if it works better from there. I don't know if it's the rocket or KSC switcher at, uh, at work here. The rocket does have a lot of parts involved, and so one of them might have been the cause of the crash. We'll see. Here we will know for sure. There is some moderate shaking, but not nothing unusual with the initialization of Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. SAS on, throttle, oh, here, no, no, okay, hold on. Uh, revert flight to vehicle assembly. Let's see if it crashes. Okay, so there was definitely a problem there. Uh, I'm going to try and eliminate parts and see when we stop getting the problem, and I'll come back to you with the answer. Okay, it's looking stable now. Alright, so I've uh, come up with the solution, I guess, unless it starts wiggling now. Uh, the solution was that it was the fins. Those tweak scaled fins that I added on to see if they would cause trouble? Well, they caused trouble. Uh, game crashing trouble, in fact. So it wasn't KSC Switcher at all. That was not the problem. Well, uh, let's actually uh, switch locations now. So I'm gonna recover this. Uh, no, I'll revert to VAB here. I'm gonna save this, gonna switch to Baikonur, and we'll launch from there. We'll try that again. Okay, here we're going to the launch pad at Baikonur. I've taken off the fins. I've restored the procedural fairings because I want to test the procedural fairings here. And we're just waiting for it to load up. Now, I'm not using procedural parts. It has issues in 1.1 and also in 1.1.2 seems to have introduced other issues but if you use a lot of procedural parts you get really long load times okay so here is the situation SAS on, throttle is up we appear to be stable in fact uh, I'm going to test time warping uh, no boil off apparently we are on the clamps so that's proper Whoop, ah, uh, dang it. Guess I'll have to go a little bit slower. I actually, I want the skybox very visible, so let's increase the maximum sky brightness. Okay, bit of a wiggle there. Alright, we've got clouds. They, they look okay clouds here. They look like okay clouds. Alright, so throttle up again. And ignition. And launch. Oh, by the way, I found uh, somebody else's real plumes for uh, these engines, and they seem to be working. I guess that's an okay plume. We'll see how it looks at altitude. Obviously, when you get to about 10 kilometers, it starts looking real good, right? But uh, yeah, so they were in the thread for the KK launchers pack. I've been just using my own. Oh, uh, well, I was using the, uh, the normal Carolox ones that come with real plume. This seems to be a more custom thing. Shadows on the vehicle? Apparently from the clouds. I can't I don't think anything else could be casting shadows. Hmm. I think that is a new feature of environmental visual enhancements by the way. 
get a good look at the terrain. Obviously, launching from Cape Canaveral, you just get a lot of ocean. Again, I have to keep up with the prograde vector. I could just have it hold prograde or something like that, but... Gotta get in the rhythm of things. So, we're at a hundred and... Uh, well, let's see. How many count, uh, parts was it? Uh, 133 parts. After I dumped those fins. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on. Keep turning. Okay. Uh, we're not quite real-time, but it's going pretty fast. It's not green, but it's uh, not appreciably more than a second per second. Yeah, I don't think the clouds would look quite like this from this altitude. Certainly with RSS visual enhancements, it didn't look like this. Now you can see this tiling involved. It's like the entire global texture is being tiled here and then here, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, being tiled repeatedly. Yeah, I think there's some sort of scaling issue I need to fix. Again, it's uh, my fault. Uh, I've been trying to get the clouds in somehow, and I'm probably not doing it right. Environmental visual enhancements changed so much uh, from uh, the previous version to this one, and that's why RSS visual enhancements uh, doesn't work anymore. It's almost like I've got the thing reversed, isn't it? That I've got the, the fuzzy textures appearing higher, and then the non-fuzzy textures appearing lower, whereas those are the textures that should be appearing on the global scale. Okay, separation. And ignition. Alright, looking good. Uh, let's try fairing separation at 100 kilometers. Okay, I think that worked very nicely. Certainly better than the, with the 64-bit workaround in 1.0.5 where it didn't work at all, really. So, uh, this is a positive development. Uh, so here you can see this that repeating texture that I think is a global texture. And then here we're getting the patchy one, which I think should actually be lower. That one should be higher up and then stretched across the, across the planet kind of thing. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good like this. Hmm. I mean, this is looking good. We've got quite a belt here. So these days, by default, I think uh, smokescreen has fewer particles. Let me configure the visual buttons, uh, the visible buttons, I mean. Infernal Robotics don't add the button, it messes things up. Don't ask me why. We'll add these USI ones. Okay, so smoke screen, and now it's set to 1000 by default, which is good. Ooh, we have some Z fighting? Oh, well, only briefly it looked like. It is a very sophisticated looking spacecraft, isn't it? Lots of batteries and stuff, but uh, there are a lot of things missing. I mean, you note know, monopropellant here, and that's because one thing that Realism Overhaul adds is the RCS configurations for the RCS ports, and I don't know how to do that with all Realism Overhaul, uh, configuring the RCS ports to real fuels, right? That is a complicated one. So right now we have to put up with mop propellant being here. The liquid fuel oxidizers is just because I, I didn't configure the tanks to anything else. I treated them as dead mass. I've still got the I've still got the herp pods configured for uh, attack life support, I think. So there's oxygen, water, and food in the proportions. Well, I don't know, the food food is a little bit low. No, I've got uh, water in the there are tanks on the universal storage parts that have more water and more oxygen, that's why. But yeah, uh, so I don't know if I should keep the oxygen, food, and water in an attack life support uh, way or whether I'm gonna need to add supplies for USI life support or whatever the heck 
um, some other system uses. I don't know if uh, Kerbalism is Realism Overhaul compatible or anything like that. So I don't know what sort of life support option we've really got. Well, here's the thing. There used to be, well, well, I should have remembered that Realism Overhaul is the one that adds a decoupler to the fairing base. But of course, since we don't have Realism Overhaul, we don't have a decoupler on the fairing base. So unfortunately, the spacecraft is permanently attached to the stage, which is fine. There is Scatterer involved. I don't know if uh, it'll look different from higher up. Uh, we'll boost uh, Jebediah to high orbit, and then we'll see how it looks from there. Okay, and it looks like we're about to make orbit. I'm not going to shut down, though. We will uh, continue to boost Jebediah up, like I said. Okay, we have made orbit. We're obviously not going to bring Jebediah, Jebediah down. He's got no heat shield or anything. That will have to be a test for some other time. So with auto struts off, it seems like uh, it didn't have any problems with me having struts on this thing. That didn't stop the launch. Previously, uh, what happened was with auto struts on on the procedural fairings, I couldn't even get off the launch pad. The class would release and I'd go nowhere. So that was in the colonization. Uh, test. Okay, we'll be going pretty high up it looks like. Used to be at 300 kilometers up there was a texture transition of some kind. Doesn't seem like that's happening this time. I wonder about the scatterer settings whether it's really configured properly. I mean the sun flare looks fine. I've got uh, Tomasino's Astroniki Sun Flare in. So we've got that. But there's the planet. It doesn't look bad, that's for sure. Ah, uh, anyway, so uh, we're off to a good start, I think. Uh, there are issues to work out, but we'll work through them. And uh, I will still wait patiently for Realism Overhaul to be updated. Here we are. Unfortunately, we can't bring uh, Jebediah back down, but I will continue working on things so that I can bring you more Realism Overhaul, or at least Real Solar System while we're waiting for Realism Overhaul videos. Alright, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.